Welcome back to another video for IB Environmental Systems and Societies. Today's topic is 4.2, access to fresh water. One of the main ideas in this topic is that people around the world have differing access to fresh water. Some of that access is as a result of natural processes, and some of it is as a result of socioeconomic processes. If you look in this map, it's pretty clear that right here in North Africa and the Middle East, lots of desert, very scarce water supplies. That's a natural contribution to differing levels of access of fresh water. The first knowledge statement is that access to an adequate fresh water supply varies widely. All right? Although absolute quantities of fresh water on Earth are pretty much always the same, the way it's distributed around the planet is a combination of both natural and human factors. Obviously, when we look at these maps, we can see that areas that are typically classified as desert biomes have less water availability and areas that are in more temperate climates where there's more precipitation have better access to precipitation. But that's not always the case. There are plenty of examples of people who have adequate access to water and they may not have adequate access to fresh water. Here where I'm based in Cambodia, we have the Mekong River as one of the main sources of fresh water on Earth. This is a massive river system in Southeast Asia. 60 million people live in this river basin. And I gotta tell you, when I see it on a day-to-day -day basis, it's not always the cleanest. I certainly wouldn't want to drink out of it. But we have no shortage of water for things like irrigation and hydropower here. Climate change can disrupt rainfall patterns as well. It's not just that climate change means hotter temperatures, but because it's changing the way that heat moves around the planet, those movements, those convection currents in the atmosphere will change where rain falls. So some areas as the climate warms will receive more precipitation and other areas will receive less. In some cases that will relieve um, limited access to fresh water, and in some places that may actually exacerbate or make the situation worse for people living in those areas. In these graphs, you can see that, particularly here on the right, if we compare the blue of people who are living in countries with lower water stress, we compare this to the CO2 emissions. So here we're linking water access to climate change. If the emissions continue increasing, we're gonna see more and more people living in parts of the world with limited or scarce access to fresh water. Similarly, you're gonna see that as well, where the distribution of who's living in water stressed areas and who, who has adequate access to fresh water is very much connected to global emissions. Here on these two maps, you can see how water withdrawal will change over the past 30 years or so. In the United States, in the past, they were withdrawing only 10 to 20% of the total water available. But as the climate changes and as the population grows, they're going to be withdrawing more and more of their water. Similarly, look at China. In the past, it was doing okay with only 10 to 20% of water available, but now it's becoming increasingly scarce. Take a look at India, right? China and India, these are our two most populous nations on earth. India was previously already withdrawing 20 to 40% of its available water, but now, or yeah, now, 2025, India is looking at extreme water scarcity where they're gonna be removing more than 40% of their available water supply. That's a tremendous drawdown on their natural capital of water. The next big idea in topic 4.2, access to fresh water, is that those freshwater resources can be sustainably managed. This flow chart is drawn from an environmental impact assessment or an EIA in West Africa. And you don't need to know these steps specifically, like they won't show up on an ESS exam, but they're good to, they're good to understand the process of sustainable water management. First is understanding how we're being used and what the risks are. Maybe conducting a SWOT analysis, looking at the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats for the water resources that are available at a particular site. Then we start looking at how can we use our water resources more efficiently. And then we go to things like introducing gray water reuse 
at the domestic scale or in agricultural uses or in industry so that we're actually using water for more than one purpose. And then our last process is finding alternative or new sources of water. But you should remember that Earth's water budget doesn't change very much. Over the millennia, it's been relatively consistent with 2.5% of all of the water on our planet being fresh water, and most of that being locked away in glaciers and ice caps. On an ESS exam, you might be asked to explain why access to fresh water will change in the future, or why there might be an increasing demand for fresh water. They're generally related to two things. One, is an increase in the global human population, and two is related to an increasing standard of living. So in agriculture, as there are more people on the planet, we have to feed more people, which means we need to grow more crops, which means there's more irrigation. So that directly drives the amount of water withdrawn for agricultural purposes. In agriculture, as people become wealthier, they tend to shift their diet from plant-based diets to more meat heavy diets. Meat, because it's at a higher trophic level than plants, requires more water per kilo to produce. And so a shifting change from plant-based diets to meat-based diets also drives an increase in water demand in the agriculture sector. For domestic uses, cooking and bathing predominantly, as the population grows, obviously we're cooking for more people, we're bathing more people. So that's a pretty clear connection. But as people become wealthier, they tend to live in bigger houses, they use more water for cleaning, they do more laundry, they may buy things such as dishwashers and laundry machines that use more water than doing some of those chores by hand. So as people become wealthier, their per capita consumption of water in domestic regions increases as well. For industrial purposes, again, as the human population grows, there is more industry to meet their demands from the consumer market, but also as humans become wealthier, they buy more consumer products, that leads to an increase in industry. One of the strategies for meeting freshwater demands is building new dams and constructing reservoirs of freshwater to capture the water that is running down from the mountains or down from highlands towards the ocean. Just because people have access to water doesn't mean they have access to fresh water because some of those supplies can be contaminated through unsustainable use or pollution. One of the strategies for increasing access to fresh water is by constructing new reservoirs behind dams. However, that has some challenges around it because of the downstream ecological impacts and it also may impact the quality of water that's available. A technocentric approach to meeting the freshwater needs is through the desalination process. In this graphic here, what you're seeing is the way that graphene, which is a wonderful material, can be used to separate all of the mineral salts from ocean water, leaving fresh, neutral H2O behind. Initially, at a household or individual domestic level, Rainwater harvesting is one way to increase access to fresh water so that whenever it rains, we simply capture the rain that falls on the roof and we store it either in an underground basin like this or is in simple barrels above ground. And then we can use that water and either feed it back into the internal domestic systems for things like flushing toilets or washing laundry inside the house, or we can leave it outside to do things like home gardens. A similar approach is called gray water recycling. Gray water is water that has been in contact with humans, but has not been in contact with human urine or excrement. So it's not been in touch with human waste. Gray water is like the water that goes down the drain after you shower. It's the water that goes down the drain after you wash your hands or you brush your teeth. It can be reused for other purposes. And so by doing that, it decreases the demand because then there's not a demand for fresh water straight from the mains pipe or from whatever groundwater aquifers we're withdrawing water from. Scarcity of water can and almost certainly will lead to conflict between societies. Water is essential for life and when people don't have the things they need to stay alive, they get desperate and when people get desperate, they tend to go to war. Here in this graphic, you can see the red zone 
in Northeast Africa. There's a classic case study looking at how the Nile River may lead to conflict between Ethiopia, Sudan, South Sudan, Egypt, because all of those nations depend on water from that river. You may be asked to evaluate different strategies for meeting increasing demand for fresh water. Remember, if you're gonna evaluate it, you've gotta look at the pros of each strategy, you've gotta look at the cons of each strategy, and then reach a conclusion about whether the pros outweigh the cons or vice versa. So these circles here represent different approaches to increasing people's access to fresh water. They don't necessarily lead to increases in the supply of fresh water. It just may mean increasing access to fresh water. I'm gonna come back to the case study of the Nile River. This is a big hot spot, all right? Because you've got Ethiopia building dams to meet its growing population needs, but you've also got Egypt, which has been entirely dependent on the Nile River for thousands of years. They're gonna have some disagreements there. I mentioned India earlier is already becoming a water scarce nation and with one and a half billion people, that's a lot of people who are gonna be really thirsty and pretty desperate for water to drink. Notice all of these countries here, you've got the Himalayan mountains here. As the climate changes and there's less and less ice pack on those Himalayas to feed the rivers in the area, the amount of surface water that's available to those nations downstream is going to decrease. So while their population increases, the surface water going downstream is going to decrease. That's gonna to lead to increased water scarcity and it's gonna to lead to increased potential for conflict. A lot of those conflicts are international in nature. There are some internal conflicts, such as the Colorado River Basin in the United States, where different states within the country have allocated rights to the river differently, and they're battling out in court to determine who has access to how much water. But all of the case studies that I just mentioned are international in nature. That's it for IBESS Topic 4.2, Access to Fresh Water. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you did, please consider giving it a like, subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching and happy learning.